those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. That within a month or two months, he knows that no matter how dexterous that architect, that builder is, because of the nature of the product, the structure that they seek to produce, it will take a while. There are many things that need to be put every step of the way. Hallelujah. And I thought that it was really very important for us to understand that week in, week out as we meet, God is not just bringing random knowledge. There is an exact spiritual house you are becoming. Hallelujah. There is a kind of believer that God seeks to make out of you. And it is important that you know that he's not just interested in you being a Christian. He's not just interested in you being a religious person, a churchgoer, an attendant, a congregant, a member, perhaps a fan. God desires more than that from you. His intent is that you be built in a specific way. There is a kind of believer that can advance the purposes of God. There is a kind of believer. Are we together? Just because you are a believer, having received the life of God, does not automatically make you usable. It takes a lot to furnish and to build, to chisel, and to make you become a believer with stature. Are we together? And I thought to just do this, um, perhaps just to give us a picture. What kind of believer is Koinonia building? I think I should do that just for a few minutes and then we get to part two of what we're teaching. It's important that you have this at the back of your mind to know what kind of believer the Holy Spirit in partnership with the teaching ministry is producing out of your life. That way, you will be patient. That way, you will be determined. That way, your heart will remain ever open to partner with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Number one, I believe that God seeks to build a people who are first and foremost spiritually vibrant. Your spiritual vibrancy is God's greatest goal as far as building and making you become a believer with stature spiritual vibrancy men and women who are passionate lovers of jesus and lovers of the things of god this is the first kind of believer that god seeks to build it's important you get this your spiritual growth your spiritual progress your spiritual vibrancy in order of priority is god's highest goal as far as building you up is concerned to become a passionate lover of Jesus, not just a religious fanatic, but a sincere, passionate lover of Jesus. And then a lover of the things of God. And that includes the house of God. That includes the program of God. Number two, God seeks to build in this house and through this house, a believer with character. Very important, character. What does that mean? That you are... You, you sustain a growing determination to be like Jesus in experience. A growing determination. You are a man of character indeed, not just because you hold true certain positive traits and virtues. It takes more than that. This is beyond just being positive about life. There must be a growing determination in that believer that I want my life to be a reflection of the Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. So the Lord seeks to build through this ministry, through this vision, through the things that we do, a believer that is of character, that you become the closest representation of Jesus to your world. Number three, what kind of believer is God building in and through this house? Number three, he is building 
intelligent and transformed believers intelligent and transformed believers by now you should have sustained an appreciation that spirituality does not take away intelligence in Isaiah chapter 11 when you read verse 2 and verse 3 after listing the sevenfold operation of the Spirit of the Lord verse 3 says he shall make thee of quick understanding hallelujah it takes intelligence to reflect Christ it takes intelligence to live out the purposes of the kingdom in experience so God is raising intelligent and transformed believers what does that mean believers who have a thorough understanding of the Word of God a thorough understanding of the Word of God alongside listen carefully before you write alongside the ability to apply the word towards a victorious life. It's not enough to just know the word of God. You must sustain the intelligence and the understanding to apply the word of God towards a victorious life. There are many believers that have supposed spiritual knowledge. So many kinds of information spiritually profitable but they are not able to translate their knowledge of God and their knowledge of the word towards a victorious life. Knowledge is, is, is truly a waste until you are able to translate it for your profiting and the profiting of others. So when we talk about an intelligent and a transformed believer, I'm reminded of the scripture that says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It says in all wisdom. It should not just be in abundance, but it must be mixed with wisdom. Hallelujah. Most believers shelve intelligence and transformation. And they believe that being zealous for the things of God is sufficient to produce champions out of them. It doesn't happen that way. There must be intelligence and transformation that you are having access to the word of God intelligently and methodically communicated, seasoned with grace. That when you receive that word, the Bible lets us know that it is able to drive away darkness. John 1, 5, the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. But when the word comes... Are we together now? You must also sustain the intelligence to apply that word such that it produces a victorious Christian out of you. Can I tell you, your Christian experience will be pungent to many if what you claim to know about God and about the things of God does not eventually translate into a victorious version of you. So there are many believers whose propositions about God is not desired by the nations. And the reason is because they have not seen the word you claim to know and have and understand produce a wonder out of you. Are we together? Number four, what kind of believers is God raising? Please do not forget, this is a very, this is a very beautiful introduction. What kind of a believer are you becoming week in, week out? Number four. God seeks to produce responsible, purpose-driven, and effective believers. I repeat, he seeks to produce responsible, purpose-driven, and effective believers. Responsible, purpose-driven, and effective believers. In my humble submission, I think that this is one of the major challenges with the context of Christianity in Africa. It does not capture this dimension where people evolve to be responsible, to be purpose-driven, and to be effective. We numb away the passion for efficiency, and most people are not pro-kingdom. They do not have a goal and an intent. Nothing drives their life. It's a terrible and dangerous, even destructive way to live. Destructive to you and to anyone around you. Hallelujah. Purpose-driven, responsible, and effective believers. Number five, what kind of believers is God raising in this house and through this house? Are you ready? Number five, agents of societal and territorial transformation. This is very profound. God is raising agents of societal and territorial transformation. That means individuals 
who can translate their Christian experience to a context that becomes relevant to their world. Hallelujah. This is where the tragedy of blind fanatism comes in and it's becoming a cancer in Africa unfortunately where there is such enthusiasm there is such unbending devotion are we together to many lopsided dimensions of the gospel and the truth of it in fact most people embrace dimensions that has no applicability to society one one of the greatest expressions of of um, territorial transformation was used by Jesus himself he calls us light and he calls us salt do you know that both light and salt do not benefit themselves the relevance of light is that it illuminates the room the relevance of salt is that it gives taste and preserves something other than itself I will never advocate a Christian experience that makes people small-minded, limited, and without any societal relevance. It is the reason why people become the more spiritual we are in Africa, and respectfully speaking, even across our nation, the more we, we are not able to see the, the imprint of the God life that we claim to have. Crime still remains. All kinds of vices still remains and yet there is a supposed multiplication of those who claim to be obedient to the faith there is an apostolic dimension to the Christian experience that must be captured in every believers life that I am not just a member I am not just a congregant I am light and I am salt are we together every time I have the honor of teaching the Word of God I am aware that there are several kinds of people listening to me and many of them are listening using different vistas some are listening as professionals some are listening as military people some are listening as politicians others are listening as intellectuals academicians others are listening as lay people who have never had any kind of exposure or orientation others are listening as fellow ministers of the gospel Others are listening as critics. Others are listening as, you know, maybe some unbeliever, non-Christians who are just passionate about learning and they want to just sincerely, open-heartedly listen to what we have to say. Any wise man of God who loves God and loves the people must factor in the mindset of your audience while you teach. We are not in a pastor's conference, but this is important for us to learn that in communicating the gospel, especially in the context of today's world, you must be able to buy into the mindset and the thinking of those who are listening to you. Are we together? This informs your presentation. This informs the approach to communicating the word, that the goal and the intent of teaching is for understanding. If at the end of your communication, people are left at a loss, they are not understanding, there is no point of application in their lives, you only wasted their time. And I can assure you that we live in a day and age where intelligent people will not submit themselves to foolishness. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Some of the people who come to church are intelligent nation builders, CEOs, students, men and women of God, people with superior orientations that have helped them to achieve all kinds of things in life. And if and when they do come and submit themselves to us preachers, we must be intentional about communicating the word of God in a profitable way. Imagine if, for instance, a government organization now says, we are going to allow Koinonia to be aired on national TV every time. Will Nigeria become better? because they are listening to us or are we just going to produce another group of fanatics with no purpose no vision you see blind fanatism is characterized by enthusiasm and devotion with no balance and no purpose so you find out that the extremist groups across all religions that destroy nations extremism is one of the major plagues in the world today and extremism comes from um, fanatism without purpose, fanatism without balance. Are we together? So whether it's from the Christian side or non-Christian side, any religion as this may apply, you find out that most extremists that destroy people, 
and, and kill and maim and do all kinds of things at the back of that mayhem is a destructive orientation that was not balanced it may sustain some truth there but because it was not holistically captured and presented it will produce all kinds of error widespread error so in building believers i need you to understand so you appreciate what god is doing in your life that at the end of your journey you should not be here one week two weeks one year and then you are not able to defend your transformation that would be a total waste of your time are we together as a believer you should be able to articulate with intelligence and grace that from the time i submitted myself to this body of knowledge this is what has happened to my understanding grace has come upon me not just that i got a car not just that i got a house those those things are wonderful are we together but the real proof that you have met god is that you cannot be the same person again it affects your spirit it affects your mind, it affects the works of your hands, it affects your ideology and your perspective. You imagine there are men of God here seated and that whilst listening to me, there are corrections that begin to happen in your spiritual understanding. You go back and begin to make adjustments in your ministry. You produce a dexterous and powerful people, not just tongue-talking people, not just word-confessing people, people who can be called even by government because of the level of light and salt they have become on account of your mentorship. That is leadership. That is spirituality. True leaders do not maintain followers. They translate followers to become leaders and leaders into agents of change. Hallelujah. So don't carry this mindset that I'm just coming to church. I'm about to write something now. Who knows? By this writing, I may get a car. By this writing, I may get a house. And you will indeed. But beyond that, if all I give you is prayer for a car and house, I've insulted your intelligence. Hallelujah. In the kingdom, what we present is by far superior to anything mundane. The products that we communicate are not earthbound. Are we together? They apply in the earth, but they are more superior in value and quality. The Bible speaking about wisdom says that the price of it cannot be compared with anything. That the price of it is greater than choice silver, than gold, than rubies. So when you are listening to the wisdom of God's word, you are receiving more than that which programs you to have a car, a house. Those things will become benefits that you will not even be aware of when they arrive. Because you are focusing on a bigger cause. Hallelujah. Now that you know what you are becoming, pray in one minute. Lord, I submit myself to your wisdom even tonight. Are we praying? All glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship. Pray, Koinonia. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crown and worship. Alabasaba Kusiada. Above all other gods, we lay our crown and worship. Oh, glorious God, save. 